So um, thank you very much for doing this, by the way. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm glad to be on. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. It sounds like your time is extremely scarce. Uh, you're a wife, you're a mom, you know, you're a wellness competitor, you've got a job. Like, I guess the first question, uh, I hate doing question and answer, but how do you make time in the day? Because everybody's always complaining that they don't have enough hours to do their stuff. You definitely have enough hours because let me tell you, I am the one first one to attest to it. I wake up at five in the morning every day to go do fasted. I have to be um, at this particular desk because I work from home um, 8 a.m. And then I have a daughter that goes to middle school. So I have to you know, make her breakfast, make her lunch, take her to school. And then um, after that, I uh, go back to the gym and or I meet my coach. He has a outdoor gym in his backyard called the, um, the Dog Pound Gym. And then um, I'll do some more cardio after that. And then I'll come home, make dinner for the family. So you definitely have time. You may not have time to just relax and watch TV, but I, I'm on a schedule. So being on the schedule and knowing what I'm going to be doing every single day really helps me. Very cool. So what kind of work do you do? So I work um, for a software company. Um, I work in marketing. So I've been in marketing for almost 10 years. So that's why it, for me to have um, my own side gig, it's really easy for me to market. I was just telling Justin Yurko, the guest before you, Ivan Pro, he works in sales. And, you know, I think sales, marketing, what we do, I mean, it's, it's, it goes hand in hand with the fitness industry. If you can carry a conversation, which a lot of people can't, and if you like talking to people, meeting people, which a lot of people don't, uh, if you like these things, you could, you know, write your own ticket pretty much. Pretty much. I, I totally agree with that. I think that sales and marketing, they have to be um, – together because we we are the ones that kind of um design all of the marketing materials for the salespeople to kind of go out and yeah absolutely got amazon's fit mag here my new sponsor they're awesome they celebrate muscular women and they got a great magazine in sight so check them out but yeah like and again the thing too uh brie is like not only is this a great area for creative people like us i'm gonna toot my own horn because i am creative also but like the people that we talk I think they have a pretty good BS radar. And so if we don't love what we do, if we're not about what we do, they'll know right away and then sail over. Exactly. I think that even that that's even for yourself. Like if people don't think that you're confident, they'll know right away. If, especially if like if you're on stage and you don't show confidence, the judges will know right away. That's that's actually I had not thought about that at all. And uh, I've covered plenty posing clinics and some of the most seasoned judges will say, take the stage like you're going to win. You know what I mean? Like you work too hard for this, you know, don't get on there and hide your physique, you know, show off what you got. You know what I mean? And, and a big part of that is knowing how to pose and the demeanor, you know, like you, you take the stage like a winner, it's going to show. Yeah. Everything counts. Every second counts. Yeah. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about your coach though, because this outdoor gym I find kind of cool and I like the name of it too. Yeah, um, his name is Doc, uh, Doc Son, it's Team Son. Um, I met him through a good friend of mine, Michelle. They're actually um, partners. Um, so he kind of like contacted me and I, I've been with him for almost two and a half years. Um, they, during the pandemic, um, they started getting equipment as, you know, as much as they could and they would work out in the backyard. Mm -hmm. uh, eventually turned into like this huge gym. They, have literally every single equipment they have this really cool equipment called the gluteator so it's it's kind of like the um abductor machine but it's right. way um and then you know so a lot of the women like to come to the dog pound gym to use that machine specifically but um during the summer months because i currently live in nevada it's really hot so he'll have like the fans he has misters like shade so it's kind of cool to like work out outside and not be indoors all the time. Definitely. That, that sounds awesome. I'm loving it. Just hearing about it. Um, Jessica Yurko, what's up? Uh, that's Justin Yurko's wife. She's awesome. So, so let me ask you about this. So did you start out being like, uh, like a regimented person, you know, like, you know, uh, following a very sort of consistent schedule or did you have to adapt to that in order to get everything done and do what you love as well i am very methodical so i need a schedule that's that's been me my entire life but i feel like once i started to be in the like competition world i needed to kind of 
make sure that it was more structured so that I didn't like go off a path or, you know, binge eat because I used to be a binge eater. Like there's certain things that um, I would have to do um, to make sure that I didn't go down that bad path. You know, it's interesting too that you talk about being a binge eater. Like I've had that problem a lot and I, I, I eat because mainly because of stress and anxiety, I actually don't even eat because I enjoy the food. I mean, which is an eating disorder, but I mean, you know, welcome to my life. But the thing is though, has competing been able to give you a, a healthy relationship with food? At first, not gonna lie, it did not. So my first competition, my rebound was really bad. Um, I didn't have the right um, person to kind of like help me with my, my reverse plan. Um, so when I, you know, started doing more competitions, I kind of learned like, this is not okay. Like you're not supposed to be binge eating. You're not supposed to be eating whatever the hell you want just because you're not going on stage in a few weeks. Um, so I really had to like do some self help with that. Now my reverse is, is just like my, you know, my prep. That's awesome. Now you started out in bikini from what you told me. You did a couple of shows in bikini and, and, and how did you discover this? Because I mean, you know, I, I feel like physique based sports have really come a long way. Social media has really helped advance and, you know, get the word out, but it's still not like basketball or football or, you know, like the mainstream sports. So how did you kind of fall into the orbit? How did you like find this? So I have to take me all the way back to when I was in school. I used to uh, sprint the one, the 100 meter dash and I used to jump hurdles. And um, during practice one day, I decided for whatever reason, I was gonna jump with my left leg. Well, an injury happened. My foot got stuck underneath the hurdle and I heard the rip and tears and fell and I, I couldn't walk. So my, basically my kneecap totally dislocated from the tendons. So it was like a floating kneecap. And ever since then, I wasn't able to really run anymore. So when I turned um, like 19, I got my membership. I was all into fitness. I've always been really um, fit. And when I say fit, I mean like regular fit, not like competing. Right. Um, so, you know, I, I've always been fit. And then um, my husband and I and my daughter, we moved to um, Nevada. We moved to Henderson. And I'm from California, from uh, Newport Beach. So it was a complete change of my life. And I went into like depression and I started binge eating again. Um, and I got to a weight that I was like not okay with. So I had met someone that was like a personal trainer that helped a few competitors, but I was more so looking for someone to just help me with my food. Um, so I met her, her name is Amanda. And um, she kind of, we kind of did like a pre-prep. Um, I saw a girl online, actually it was like the WBFF. I was like, oh, I'm going to do that. Um, and quickly I found out I didn't want to do that. But uh, that's what kind of started it. So I met her. She kind of, we went through this 12-week program and I lost a significant amount of weight and put on, you know, a, a few uh, pounds of muscle. And I was like, okay, I think I can do this. So I went 12 weeks and I actually did this. The first show was Samson, the Samson Showdown, Patrick show. And um, I didn't do very well, um, but it was my first show. I'm like, that's fine. Um, but I have pretty big legs. So for me, my coach was always trying to like, get my legs smaller, get my legs smaller. And like, I, they just don't want to be smaller. Um, so my second show, I got top five. And then I think in 2020, they came, they came the US said, they announced that they were going to do the wellness category. So my coach was like, there there it is and of course i kept you know placing top like one first place second place um and then i was up for like two shows i've been the second in the overall so second place in overall um which is kind of a bummer but i am three days out so from the legions so i'm pretty excited and my physique has never looked this way before so my coach and i are pretty excited um and then my dream and my goals are to become a pro. So I'm going to go for the amateur Olympia um, in December. So my coach is going to take me there and it's in Vegas at the Cosmopolitan. That's so cool. I think it's awesome. And, you know, because again, wellness is, is, is exploding. I think, you know, I remember when bikini hit the stage and I think wellness is growing at the same uh, speed. And the only difference though, is that, a bikini is a far, and this is no diss on bikini. I think bikini is the hardest division, in my opinion. I'll tell you why, because you have the least amount of stage time, 
and you've got an enormous amount of competitors, you know, mm-hmm. that may be very difficult. But what I was going to say, though, was that uh, bikini is an attainable look. Wellness is sort of, but you, you either have the legs or you don't. And yeah. not everybody, I see a lot of coaches out there saying that they can turn a bikini competitor into a wellness competitor in six months. I think that's a bunch of crap. I, I don't think that's possible. I think, you know, either your case, you've got the big legs and, and then you've got to fine tune it or somebody has got to spend years to get to that level. You can't just wake up one day and say you're going to be a wellness player. I don't think so. I think unless you're like one of those genetic freaks, right? right? Put on yeah. muscle in their sleep, you know? <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. And then for you, bikini must have been miserable because with, with the legs, with big legs, every girl that I know that did bikini that is a wellness competitor was eating some pretty bad placings because, you know, like you don't want to lose muscle. And I was doing a shit ton of cardio and eating nothing. So it was not for me. That's why my first uh, like reverse was so bad. Right. But I think it's good though, uh, you know, in hindsight, that you gave yourself, you know, that sort of like that breathing room. Because a lot of people, like when they do their first show, unless they do, unless they knock it out of the park, they quit. I mean, I think it's very like pragmatic. I think it's like very reasonable to like, you know, be okay with, you know, not nailing it the first couple of times. This is like a completely different sport than anything else. It's different than jumping hurdles or, or anything, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I am not the type of person that will quit on the first try. Um, I will keep going until I get to my goal, unless it's like, I need to stop, but I don't think I'm at a place where I need to stop yet. So talking about being three days out and, you know, you've done regional shows and even on national stage, you're going to go to the uh, amateur Olympia. How, how is that with family? Like, uh, I mean, obviously like a, you know, a middle school girl is not going to want to eat contest prep food, your husband maybe, but I mean, how is it like food wise? And especially as you get closer to the show and you're, you know, you don't really have the same amount of carbs or fats. How does that work? Yeah, well, my daughter is a vegetarian, and my husband, um, and my husband also works with my um, coach as well. He doesn't want to compete, but he also works with him. So mm-hmm. he'll kind of like all meal meal prep, like the chicken, the beef, the turkey, the vegetables, and then he'll eat what he wants, and then he'll eat on prep or on like his meal plan. Um, so at first, it was kind of hard before he was with my coach because I was we were making something for her, something for him, and then my stuff. Um, but uh, it was, it was, I think it was hard when my daughter first went vegetarian because I had like, oh, what do you eat? <laughs> you know what I mean? All I eat is protein. Like all I eat is meat. So um, at first it was, it was very difficult, but now I've, I've been, I'm in a, a rhythm now. So she's been be, our vegetarian for like four years now, three years now. Yeah. Well, kudos to you for being supportive. I've been vegetarian since I was 14. And, uh, you know, my mom was also very supportive and there's tons of protein available. I will, I'm not vegan, vegetarian, so I have dairy and eggs and all that, but I think yeah. it's so supportive. If it's a phase, I'll grow up, but if not four years, probably not a phase, but like it wasn't for me, but I think it's great that you do that. And the only reason I squinted when you said your husband didn't compete, I've never seen your husband. Something tells me he's in really good shape, but you know, um, for, for many, many coaches, lifestyle clients are their bread and butter really not competitors. But I think in a household with you and from how you described him, I'd, I'd be shocked if he didn't at one point compete, but you never know. You never know. I, I don't know. He, he says he will never, but, and I, I don't think he will, but it'd be really cool if he did. Yeah. One, one thing that they used to do a lot of, uh, they don't really do it so much, but couples, uh, especially at the amateur level, couples could compete and they had the, like, their own classes. And prom- I'll tell you some promoters love it. If, if they could have couples competing, they would in a heartbeat because I mean, it, it sells tickets like, you know, like hotcakes, you know, it's very entertaining. Yeah. You get the whole family in there and there's more seats. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, I'm trying to think of uh, the, uh, the original classic uh, physique Olympia, Danny Hester and his wife, they had a posing routine. And they went all around the country. And I mean, they just entertained the heck out of like audiences everywhere. So it was, it was amazing. Um, so being three days out, I mean, here you are doing an Instagram live with me and we're talking about all sorts of topics. Like, where's your, where's your mindset at? Like, like, like when you get ready for the show, when, when is it, when does it hit you? Does it hit you like right before you get on stage? Does it hit you the night before? Or are you at the point where this is just like second nature? Um, it is kind of like second nature, but I think it truly hits me like when I'm pumping up, like mm-hmm. I'm at stage right now, like in 10 minutes, you know what I mean? So, um, but when I, when I am about to compete, I kind of like 
don't talk. I get in my own zone. I don't look around. I don't want to know what other competitors look like because I don't want to get in my head. Right. So, you know, focus on me, focus on what I can do and show the judges what I feel. Um, but some people, you know, think I have resting bitch face, but you know, that's just me. I'm very friendly and I'll talk to anyone there, but like right before I go on stage, I need like to just, it's like a, it's like a, um, what is it? It's just me meditating basically right. by my. I know people, I shouldn't say this because I'm going to like give away their secrets, but I know people backstage that have headphones on and they're actually not listening to anything. The headphones are a prop so that people won't talk to them. They just want peace. Like they want to be like Zen. You know what I mean? Sometimes I do that at the gym actually. Cause sometimes you're like, I'm so sick of my music right now. So I'll just, I'll have them on like, cause you look funny not working out with your headphones on. Right. <laughs> It, I, I just think it's hilarious because, like, this one guy, I won't say his name. I want to say his name, but I won't say his name. He's like, I can't hear you. I'm so sorry. I'm listening to something for work. And he had nothing on. Now, I think, yeah, the, the person he was saying it to must have thought these were, like, some high-tech hear earphones. Because I don't care how good they are. You can still kind of hear a little bit. This guy mm -hmm. had nothing. But the thing is, you know, I think backstage, like, honestly, there's very, very few, like, catty people back there that are going to try to undermine you. There really aren't any like that that I'm aware of. There, there might be. But, but really, the danger is is just sort of that, that, that awkward conversation to kill time. That, that can actually, like, trigger some, some, some nerves. That can, it, it, it's just best to not talk backstage. Listen, I have met some incredible women competing that I am friends with on Instagram. I talk to them, like, daily. There, I motivate them, they motivate me. Like, you will meet the best people when you compete. And that's one of the things that I love about the sport, regardless of anything else, like meeting people that are just so genuine and love the same things that you do. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better connection than that. No, absolutely. And, you know, you could talk like when you're tanning up or, you know, getting in line for check-ins, you know, but just, just those like two or three minutes, five, 10 minutes, right before you hit the stage, you know, I think your your take is the one that most people that resonates with most people. Yeah. You know, that's so many things. You know, and the thing is, it it really isn't about you versus the other ladies. It's really, and I'm not, I'm not trying to sound cliche, but it really is all about you versus you. At the end of the day, yes, I agree with that completely. Yeah, because you're trying to beat the person that was on. You're just trying to beat you that was on stage last time. So I agree with that. Yeah, especially I think if you compete locally or or in front of the same judges. Because they know what you're capable of. And if and you have to beat the last best, you know, so Yeah. I love getting in front of Sandy because she gives the she gives like the perfect feedback. I love that. I got her her last name wrong once. I, I think I said Rinaldi instead of Williams or something. I don't know. I I, 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 I put my foot in my mouth. But she's super <laughs> cool. Yeah, and, and she is really Sandy is like the like I don't know, like the Gary, the Steve, the, the, you know, she, she is that for the women. She is like to her eye is just second to none, you know? So if you can ever like stand in front of her, that that's, that's huge. She's just a genuine person. I've met her a few times, spoken to her a few times. So. Definitely. So, I mean, you know, you're going to hit the stage at the, uh, the amateur Olympia, you know, you've got the pro card in mind. You know, what, what, what goals do you have with regards? I mean, I think it's obvious that you want the pro card. It's obvious you want to compete at the pro level. But, but what would you like to achieve, like, say, in the next five, ten years, if everything goes your way? That's a really good question. Um, I really want to um, motivate and inspire young children. Um, because when I was a young child, um, I didn't really have, like, the guidance of what healthy was or what a workout looks like. Um, my parents just never did that. So with my daughter, um, she loves to go to the gym with me sometimes. And then she also plays volleyball. So um, I would love to just inspire young women, young girls, um, to just let them know that you can work out. You won't, like I, in another podcast that I did, they asked me, you know, do you, do you like women with muscles? And I, yes, the answer is yes. But most women, not in a competition world, but most women think that if you are going to lift weights, you're going to look like a man. Well, in reality, what is your perception of what a man looks like? Because I can see a man over there that looks very skinny. That's not what I want to be, you know? So it's like they're, they're, um, I just want them to know that working out, eating healthy um, is good for you and your health. And um, 
I really would like to do that. Absolutely. And I want to just tie in my sponsor. And I, I know this is like, I hate doing this, but I, it's so fitting uh, uh, for Amazon Fit Mag because I'll tell you something, muscular women, uh, whether we're talking bikini all the way to women's bodybuilding are so sought after. Uh, there's a booth at the Arnold Classic. I've been to the Arnold in a long time, but it's the muscle pinups booth. And, um, you know, they had women's bodybuilders there all the time. And even, even during the time that women's bodybuilding was on the verge of extinction, because before Jake Wood, when it got dropped from the Arnold, Miss International, it got dropped from the Olympia, it, it was getting to the point where it almost didn't, you know, you almost scratched your head at why women were trying to turn pro because there were no pro shows for them to compete in, right? And let me tell you something, Bree. The lines for these ladies were like around the corner. The same lines Rich Piana had, that booth had. And it wasn't a schmo that, you know, haters of muscular women like to portray, like this like skinny guy with sweaty palms and, and a pocket protector. These were like some jack dudes. And they wanted to meet the muscular women. They wanted to take pictures with them. They wanted to talk Bible with them. So I think that the whole construct of what's feminine and what's not is a bunch of crap, honestly. So I think if you can dispel that with your physique and by communicating, I can't think of a better role model that you could be, you know? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, completely. The other thing I was going to say as well, you know, is competing at this elite level. I also think it sets a good example, you know, for sportsmanship, just in general, you know, uh -huh. because you're not always going to win. You're not, things are not always going to work out, but you want to be happy for the next lady, you know, because your time will come. Yeah. It's funny that you say that because like, if my daughter, you know, loses her, um, like a game or something like that, I think there was one time she, it was the, for her first loss. And I told her, do you remember how upset mommy was when I lost, you know, my show? And she was like, yeah. And I'm like, and you, you know how I didn't give up. And she was like, yeah, I'm like, so why don't you go practice or let's go, you know, hit the ball a little bit. Let's go serve. And um, she really liked that. So to me, that's you have to show them because you can't just win. You can't give like participation points because they're never going to know what a loss feels like. Right. Um, I try to, you know, teach that to her. Absolutely. And I, I think that that's great. I think that's awesome because I feel and I'm not trying to you know, preach on a soapbox here, but I feel like our country this is not a political thing. It's just an observation I made. But I feel like our country is getting a little soft. You know what I mean? And it's not a good thing. So I think that, that tasting some adversity, you know, you know, cutting your teeth a little bit in a placing you don't like or not always seeing success is a good thing. I think it builds character, honestly. And I think that you being able to, to kind of reference a time when you didn't do so well or you didn't do as you expected and she saw that she could relate she knew that you weren't just giving her like some can you know mother daughter speech you know like she you know i think that that that's like serious credibility yeah i mean i want to try to teach her everything i can you know what i mean but she's a lot smarter than me she wants to go to harvard so <laughs> i can tell your voice crackling too that 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 you love her to death and, and i, I want to crying but but yeah but it's a great lesson you know and it's a great lesson and, and and i think that it's a very very valuable life lesson as well that maybe she'll teach her daughter you know yeah exactly exactly and she may be a future wellness competitor because volleyball is like the wellness training camp yeah you know i mean every volleyball girl has huge quads yeah yeah that's true that's true definitely all too but she's not very tall so we'll see How uh she probably won't be taller than like five four Hmm. Yeah. I grew till I was, well, I'm a guy, but I grew till I was 19. And I know because I used to yell at night because I don't know if it's like the growth plates or whatever. I don't know. Or maybe I just like to yell at night. I don't know. But uh, I grew till I was 19 and a half. I, I, I grew three quarters of an inch when I was 19. So who knows? Um, so let's talk a little bit about the creative side of Brie, because like this is something that we talked about also before. And I'm also a creative person. Um, tell me about like, I know you like to like draw, you like, you know, like do stuff with uh, yeah. sorts of When I lived in California, I used to be a makeup artist. Um, so I would do weddings, um, you know, f uh, fitness photo shoots, you know, you name it, I did it, uh, music videos. But when I moved to Nevada, I kind of like lost all of my clients. So I decided, you know, instead of doing makeup, what else can I do? Um, so I started like creating things. Uh, I would put it on Etsy. I have a, a cricket. I would I can make anything with it, like shirts, 
Um, I make um, ornaments and um, sell them. Um, so I, I do a lot of stuff, but I make things for my daughter. I uh, will design and make her um, costumes when she was younger. Um, I just love creating stuff. It puts my mind at ease. It's like a, a meditative state um, where I can just like clear my head, kind of like being at the gym, but not being at the gym. Um, and I, I love it. I, I've always had like a creative mind ever since I was young. Um, so, yeah. And I think, I think that the, the creative mind and the different formats can like really be conducive to you wanting to motivate people. Because again, like how do you, what's the vehicle going to be for you to get your message to as many people as possible? We've got social media. So we've got, we've got the vehicle, but then it's not just the vehicle. Like how do you, make it interesting. And I think that's where the creativity comes, like where you can get people to do a double take or like look closely at something. And when they do that, then they get the message, right? So I think that that kind of goes hand in hand as well. Yeah. And another thing um, that I kind of want to start doing is I love posing people. I can see it immediately, what needs to be changed, what looks good. Um, a lot of my friends come to me. I'll even do it on like online or um, at the gym. But I love posing people in wellness um, because I just, I feel like I have a, a niche for it and I can see it right away. And I feel like people trust me. So they, I'm not just giving them like, oh yeah, that looks good. I'm not a yes man, you know what I mean? I will tell them, no, that doesn't look good. You need to do it this way. Um, so I, I would love to do that as well. When I have, yeah, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just saying when I have time. When you have time, right, because like you actually do have a very, very busy day. But um, I think it's great that you're that creative and that you want to like help people look their best. And that's really important. And sometimes, yeah, you know, sometimes people don't maybe look so good and they may think so. And maybe nobody has the, the, the guts to tell them that, you know, but there might be a slightly better way or a better like stance or something like that. Um, so I think that's important. I think like, it's, it's good for credibility for sure. And um, a lot of you see, a lot of people will, will, will look at somebody knowing that they could look a lot better doing something else and just not tell them. And you're not helping the person when you do that. Oh, not at all. And it, to be honest, it could be like one little tweak that they need to and it's like, bam, there you go. That's the pose. When I was covering these posing clinics, uh, and I covered probably like, uh, I helped put together a couple uh, on the media side, and, and I covered quite a few. And I'm telling you, like, like Linda Andrew, for example, or Becky Clawson, like some of these, like, really, really, uh, just really sharp eye judges, and they've sat alongside Sandy as well. Um, like you said, just like a, like a millimeter could make such a big difference. Again, the, and, and, and to the trained eyes of the judges, they can see all that stuff. Yeah, you know I mean, and, and I, I just can't imagine like how high the stakes are. You've put 16 weeks, spent all sorts of money, sacrificed all sorts of time to, you know, miss a placing because of a millimeter, you know? Yeah, if you're not sucking in your gut and you're not sticking out your butt, like that's what my husband does. So it's, uh, it's, yeah, if you're not doing those things, then you're not going to win. No, definitely. And, and even, even like, uh, uh, something that I've heard a lot is, uh, you know, from a lot of competitors that have had to learn this the hard way. But when they say relax, they don't really mean totally. Relax, you know what I mean? Not, not at all. Yeah. Mm. So I have to ask you, I wrote this down. I wrote down a few things. But what is the gym closet? Because we didn't actually get to talk about that before we jumped. And so I'm very curious. James Muldrow, what's up, my man? What is the gym closet? So the gym closet, um, I have a partner. Her name is Nikki Doki. She's actually an IFBB pro bikini. She's also going to be at Legions with me. Um, she's going to be competing this weekend. Um, so her and I have our gym clothes fanatics. We have a ton of gym clothes that we have never worn or lightly used. Um, so we kind of decided, you know, instead of, you know, donating it, why don't we, because we have like thousands of dollars worth of clothes, why don't we try and sell it, give it to people that are maybe in their fitness journey, they've gone down in size or they've gone up in size, wherever their fitness journey is, why not instead of them having to keep buying different sizes, because Lulu's are expensive, um, why don't we 
sell them. So all of our items are, you can purchase anything for $25 and under. And it's bombshell clothing, um, Lululemon, Athleta, Athleta, like all high-end brands um, that you can get for 25 and under. And we've, we've done pretty good. Um, we just haven't had the time to kind of market it. Um, once this show's over, I can kind of market it a little bit more. But um, our thought process was we're constantly changing in our bodies. And instead of spending more money on clothes, why don't we sell it to people that are in that fitness journey for a little less? And so how can people access it? Does it have like a website or do you do it through Instagram or what? Yeah, so it's um, thegymcloset.com. And then Instagram, it's the.gymcloset. Cool. Yeah, I'll do a reel out of it. I mean, I think that's awesome. And again, for anybody out there, like any haters, why don't you donate it? Because the thing is, when you donate it, I mean, come on, like you donate gym clothes to, I mean, Salvation Army or whatever organization, who, who's going to get, you know, what I mean? it's probably going to end up being thrown away because most mainstream people don't know about these really high end brands you're talking about. They won't appreciate it. Chances are they won't buy it and nobody will wear it. So I think what you're doing is what you and your partner are doing makes a lot of sense because again, you know, these aren't clothes that you don't want. It's just that your body's changed. So yeah. you, you can't wear them. Right. And, and some of them you haven't even worn at all. So I think that's, that's a really good idea. Yeah, and we have people that um, once we get like more set up, what we want to do is have a platform where um, people can go in and put their clothes in and sell it that way. Um, because we are looking for, you know, all different type, type body, sh body shapes and sizes and whatnot. Um, so, and then we don't take anything that's like not lightly used. And when I say lightly used, you've worn it like once or twice. Can't have right. holes, can't be smelly. Like we'll go through Q and like, a Q and A process um, of it all. Yeah, it sounds. It's really honestly what it sounds like. It sounds like a, like a high end consignment boutique, you know. Please. And the, you know, yeah. you still. I mean, people go. We have several in Louisville, and uh, you know the prices are still really high. But again, they're not as high as new, but they're still really high. So I, I you know, your standards are, are very high, you know. And uh, and I think what's going to happen too, is that once people buy from you. You're going to have a lot of repeat business, I think. Yeah, we have actually. Yep, exactly. So Very when we cool. do, we'll, you know, put it on the website is these are the things that are new and stuff like that. But um, like I said, because her and I have been prepping for the show, we really haven't had the time to market it. Right. I cannot believe you're three days out. And I cannot believe that your business partner is also doing the same show. And here you are doing this. So again, you know, I just, I, I just really wanted to like, just touch on the fact that you know, when there's a will, there's a way. And I'm not trying to drop all these like catchy lines, but really, honestly, you're waking up at five in the morning, you're getting everything done. As a mom, you know, you, your, your daughter doesn't expect anything less because you're doing a show. Your husband doesn't expect anything less. Your employer doesn't, you know. So you just got to like, you got to, you know, hit, you know, fire on all cylinders. And then you're going to bring a fantastic package to the stage. So I, kudos to you. Thank you. I mean, I could really couldn't do it with the support of my husband, like seriously, because I know this week I'm absolutely crazy with no carbs. So I, he's like, okay, she's just crazy this, this week. I will, you know, put up with her. But um, his support is what helps me get through those 5 a.m. sessions, because let me tell you, at the end, it's really tough to like put your mind and get your mind right. Definitely. Definitely. Well, listen, I, I hope we can do another one of these soon. Um, I definitely want to hear more about the gym closet and, and everything else you're part of. Um, your link tree is very, very cool. I suggest everybody check out Bree's link tree and you're putting on content. Like, you know, that's why I reached out to you. Like you're putting on content, thoughtful content on a daily basis. And that's also a job. That's also a job. Uh, yep. Completely. Yeah. So anyways, I, I really appreciate you taking the time and I hope we do this again soon. All right. Cool. Thank you for having me on. Take care. Definitely. Bye. Me too. On this competitor, Brie Goins, is Christian Duke, strengthaddicts.com. Thank you.